Welcome to Dude RV. Hey, I appreciate y'all stopping by. If this is your first visit, make sure you click on the subscribe button and hit the bell as well. Right now, I'm at Choke Canyon State Park. We're getting on the road. We're done here. We are headed over to Goliad State Park, the heart of Texas history. So come on along with me. Let's go to Goliad State Park. Well, here we are, Goliad State Park. Not too bad a drive. Sunday, August 5th, 2020. We're in, we got a nice little site here. As you can see, <laughs> we get to look at all of the weeds and the trees. But we've got some nice big trees that hopefully will give us a little shade here in a little bit. Site number 13, Goliad State Park. It's a pull through as most of the RV sites in Goliad State Park are pull-throughs. Pretty level. Uh, I pulled a little farther up to make sure it was good and level. It is a full connection site. But my, my dump is here and to get the optimal spot I'm, I might have to get a sewer hose extension. 50 amp, 30-50 water sewer and a hackberry tree on the east side it's a big pull through site so you could fit big coach in here nice front yard a lantern hook wooden picnic table on a concrete slab charcoal cooker firewood burner site number 13 goliad state park so i'm gonna grab a little bit of lunch and then we're, we're gonna go see some stuff. Have you ever wondered why we celebrate Cinco de Mayo? I never wondered that. I, you know, just not one of them. I'm not a big Cinco de Mayo celebrator, but I think it's notable for Texas history that it is the birthday of General Ignacio Zaragoza. And it says here his victory over the invading French army at the Battle of Puebla, May 5th, 1862, inspired the Mexican people in their long struggle to overthrow the foreign emperor, Maximilian. And why that's significant to our visit to Goliad is that he was born here in Goliad. And his birthplace is just over there. We're going to go check that out. But first, we're going to take a look at this sign.
Zorgosa Plaza. Viva el Cinco de Mayo. And that's what his house looks like, so we'll go see that. All right, so it's part of the Goliad State Park, the Zargosa Birthplace, and that's this white adobe building. And according to this plaque, General Ignacio Zargosa, Goza, uh, we've already discussed him when we were looking at the monument. We're going to go inside his birthplace here and take a look. But I gotta put the mask on, so hold on. I like maps. La Bahia, Goliad. It's nice and cool in here, so if you're out here in the summer, this is a nice thing to come see. Pack, move, and unpack. That's kind of what we do in the RV world. So this is the reason for Cinco de Mayo. If you are big into celebrating Cinco de Mayo, then you should come see Zargoza's birthday, birthplace. All right, not part of the state park, but a lot of the history from, of Goliad because of this structure right here. And not all Texas state parks are all about the, the fun and games. Here at Goliad State Park, one of, the, one of the notable features is the grave of Colonel Fannin and his men. I'm not gonna go into full detail as to what happened, but basically Fannin and his men surrendered and were taken prisoner and that word is not actually correct they were held at the the chapel it's over there but they were held in the chapel and then his men were marched out and massacred on palm sunday uh, 18 march 27 1836. his men were put into a pile and partially burned and then just left and a few weeks after texas won uh, the troops that were following the Mexican soldiers back into Mexico found the re partially burned remains and then buried them. And this memorial was erected to commemorate that. So this is the, the grave marker of Fannin and his, his soldiers. So in the final battle of the Texas Revolution, the battle cry was, remember the Alamo, remember La Bahia. In, in commemoration of the massacre of Colonel Fannin and his men. So this is the name of the men who were who died in the battle and were buried in the in the field. And these are the men of the names of the men who were massacred on Palm Sunday. And this marker was erected in 1938 and it's listed on the register, National Register of Historic Places. Truly a, a somber. All right, we're gonna go check out the Angel of Goliad marker. So stay tuned, more to come. So the Angel of Goliad. This marker was erected to commemorate her. And she was Francisca Alaves. She helped save the lives of quite a few people, quite a, quite a few soldiers from uh, the Mexican army. Um, she was commemorated for, for brave acts of kindness. Uh, she actually saved a number of, of troops from the massacre, Fannin's massacre, as well as providing uh, care to 
troops captured in other battles. So the angel of Goliad. More to come. Stay tuned. So 1749. This mission, Mission Nuestra Señora del Espíritu Santo de Zinga. Zingia. It's a very old building. We are in Goliad. Here at Goliad State Park, there is just tons of history. I'm cruising around the ruins outside the mission. Apparently this, this mission had a lot of cattle. Most of the missions maintain pretty sizable cattle herds to feed their folk. At one point, a lot of those cattle from the missions were taken to, during the Revolutionary War, they were taken to New Orleans when the French decided to help the colonists. So the CCC reconstructed this building. For a long time, the, the, the mission was used as a, a local stone resource. So if you needed some stone, you could come on over to the, go on over to the old mission and, and just get, get your stone there. So then the CCC rebuilt it Kind of dark in here. Goliad State Park. Very, very old stuff. Lots of old stuff. All right, let's go see some more stuff. We made it inside the museum. How do you pronounce it? What's the proper pronunciation? Uh, Mission Espiritu Santo de Zuniga. Espiritu Santo de Zuniga. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Oh. That's what it originally looked like. Okay, so apparently this, this is the last walls standing. The original walls. Let's go see some more stuff. We're gonna see the chapel. So I guess this is just a, wow. It, there's a lot of echo. So just a, a recreation. That's the pulpit, I guess. So Goliad State Park isn't just a, a real large operation. There's not a whole lot here. But what is here is a major historical precedence. Let's go see what else we can find. If you are a birder or have considered becoming a birder and you come to Goliad State Park, then you can come and hang out in the, the bird blind, rain or shine. They even give you some bird pictures to look at. The bird feeders here are actually full. Unlike the last park we were visiting where the bird blind was decrepit. All right, let's go see some more stuff. If you decide you wanna come pay a visit to Goliad State Park, but you don't have an RV and you don't wanna sleep in a tent, you don't wanna rent a hotel room, well, by golly, they got screen shelters. I imagine they're locked, but you know, it's just got, it's got no seam screen on there. Keep the bugs off of you. Lantern hook. I mean, you're basically camping, but you just you don't have a tent. They have electricity. So stay tuned. More to come.
Goliad State Park. Today, this morning, uh, we're gonna take a little journey. We're gonna head over, it's like 15 miles east of the town of Goliad and pay a visit to the Fannin Battleground. That's also considered part of Goliad State Park. So no visit to Goliad State Park would be complete without going to see the Fannin Battleground. So we're gonna get in a little white truck and head that way. Let's go. The Battle of Coletto Creek took place here. And one of the survivors of the battle came back uh, and marked the spot where he remembered one of the stone uh, barricades that, that, that the Texians had assembled. And in 1894, Mr. Saul Parks, one of the owners of the land, embedded that giant screw where the pile of rocks were. Sad thing. And the Battle of Coletto Creek was just not ever going to be a movie. Probably not. Uh, but it was, it was instrumental in Texas winning 10 acres. The memorial is 10 acres that was deeded to the state by another landowner. Um, and since 1894, there's not been a, a plow or any grazing on this land. You can pause and, and look at these, should you so desire. I'm gonna head over here to the central monument in memory of James Fannin Jr. and fellow patriots who surrender here by honorable terms on March 20, 1836, involved the sacrifice of their lives at La Bahia. Victims of treacherous, treacherous, brutal, well, I can't read it, I gotta get up here close. Victims of treachery, brutal stroke, they died to break the tyrant's yoke. On fame's eternal camping ground, their silent tents are spread and glory guards with hallowed round the bivouac of these dead. It's deep stuff, man. All right, we'll go check out that monument. This is how the monument memorial was originally laid out. And, and there, at one point, there was a caretaker's residence and a windmill with water reservoir uh, that were added to help maintain the luxuriant flowers and trees that were planted here. Apparently that's in disrepair. So sad. And these grounds were donated in 1914 by Mr. Hanley. Right, so we're gonna move over and check out that side. It's quite a few historical markers. The community has used this area uh, for a lot of notable things, barbecues, weddings, and at one time, well, this is the reservoir, but it's since been capped, but apparently that was used as a swimming pool. So every year near San Jacinto Day, residents and former residents gather to remember the past and anticipate the future. So April 21st, you can come and remember the past and celebrate the future. In the 1920s, they built the bandstand. Strong, Strong, who was the caretaker, created this museum. Of course, I don't think the artifacts are still here. The audio in here is horrible, so let me get out of here. I hope you've enjoyed our little visit to the Fannin Battleground site. A little uh, history, history lesson for you. If you're ever out this way, it is definitely, in my opinion, worth a visit. We wouldn't, Texas would not be a state 
if it were not for the sacrifices made by our ancestors. At least we can do is pay them a little homage. I'm traveling back from the Fannin Battleground site, uh, headed back to Goliad State Park. I thought I'll, I'd check out downtown Goliad. We've got a park here. It's another monument erected in memory of Fannin and his men. The cannon that was used by Fannin and his men. And this cannon was found on the streets of Goliad after the Battle of 1836. It's an old piece of metal. Something of interest at Goliad State Park is this is the high watermark for the flood. October 27, or October 22, 1998. This is where the water was, which means the campground was underwater. Well, that was fun. I just completed, uh, I just did the scooter run on the Angel of Goliad Trail. It's not, it's not something that the state park did. It's something that the city of Goliad did. So click on the scooter trail rides and you can see this trail that the city of Goliad has put together. That, that, that was a nice little run. Uh, well developed. So if you've got a mobility scooter, you can definitely go for a, a little spin on that. Easy to navigate. Goliad State Park. We're coming to the close of our visit here. I think Goliad is a destination. It is, it is one that you need to put on your, your list of, yeah, I gotta go see that park. Uh, not because of the scenery because you know sitting here in camp there's not a whole lot of, of scenery uh, there's not real great river access unless you're a kayaker that I could find uh, there may be beaches or a shoreline where you can get in the water somewhere but I only found the, the kayak recovery but with all of the history here in the little area around Goliad, this is definitely a destination. You know, you're almost walking distance to downtown on that uh, Angel of Goliad trail. Definitely bicycle range. Uh, it's a nice little square. I didn't, the, everything was closed today uh, because it's a holiday uh, and COVID-19 probably. So I didn't shoot a whole lot of video in the downtown area but it is it's small town texas historical small town texas if you're going to come to goliad state park and you're coming in the summer you want to be on the outside of the the pull through loop because we get the afternoon as you can see here we've got the afternoon shade those on the inside they don't get much in the way of shade so they're hotter. Nice campground, very well kept. And that pretty well, <laughs> that says it all right there. Not much else to say. We're gonna start stowing our gear, preparing for takeoff in the morning. And from here, we're headed over to Corpus Christi Lake State Park. See what that one's all about. If this is your first visit to Dude RV, Thank you so much for stopping by. I appreciate you. If you've not already done it, please click on the subscribe button and hit that bell as well. You don't want to miss another one of these fantastic campgrounds that I visit. For those of you who have been following, thank you. I am so deeply honored. That's why I do what I do. Y'all keep me going. Thank you for that. Y'all come back now, you hear?